Luke 17, verse 11. The New, Inter the New International Version reads it like this. Now, somebody said now. On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he was going into a village, ten men, ten men, love, ten men who had leprosy met him. And they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Master. And when he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to look at a few people around you and say, I just went from leper to leaper. Well, you ain't leaped yet, so I'm going to say it again. Tell them you just went from leper to leaper. Well, I'm still waiting on you. You just went from leper to leaper. I'm still with somebody better jump for Shantae. She pregnant, so somebody leap for the baby, leap for the baby in her. I just went from leper to leaper. You gonna get it in a minute, but I just need somebody to begin to praise them in advance and say, wait a minute. I just went from leper to leaper. Now, for the folks still sitting in their seat who don't know why you're going to leap, I'm going to tell you now, it's better to leap in advance than to leap afterwards. Sir. So I'm going to give you one more chance and say, I just went from leper. Now let me show you how I leap, boo-boo. Let me show you how I leap in this. Let, 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 me, let me help you with this. The text says that Jesus is in a right now moment. Tell him he's in my right now moment. This is my now time. The text says now. This isn't last year. This isn't in that time. This is now. I need five people to understand. I'm leaping now. I, I'm not leaping yesterday. I'm leaping now. Everything that's happening right now, it says now. It's not yesterday. The text is speaking to me right now. It sets the time. I don't have to worry about when this is going to happen. The text is telling me when it happens. It happens now. He was on his way. Tell somebody Jesus on his way. He's working it out for my good and he's working it out. Y'all ain't talking to me. He's working it out now and he's working it out for my good because he's on his way to fix it. Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. So now he's on his way. And when the text says when he's on his way, he's walking along the border of Samaria and Galilee. And he gets to the village and ten men, ten men, they don't say women for the men. For the men who like to put the women up to stuff, ain't no women in this one. Hey, come on, come on, so I'm going to talk to the men. Hey, come on, ladies, work with me. You know how, how the men like to talk about us sometimes. Well, we're going to drop it like it's hot right now because tell the men God's on his way for you right now. <laughs> Men's ministry, God is on his way for you right Y'all better run for me. Somebody better take off. Men's ministry, God's on his way to set it right. I need five people who will understand and jump for the men. God said, I want to put my men back in place. I, I want to put my men back as pillars. I, I want to restore my men. I, I want to get my men back in the forefront. I want my men to be men. But I got to heal them. He said there were ten men who had leprosy, ten of them. There were ten. Anybody in here from Love Nation Church that just celebrated a ten-year anniversary, somebody say this is the year to set it in place. Everything that's ever held us back, Jesus is on his way to fix it. The Bible said now. The ten who had leprosy. 
There were 10 of them, 10 men. And, they, and the Bible says that, they, that Jesus was along the coast of the village. You know, he was, he was far off from them. No matter what you're dealing with, Jesus is still in the vicinity. And all you got to do is be able to look up in the midst of your misery, in the midst of your mess, in the midst of your pain, in the midst of your misunderstandings, in the midst of your backbiting, in the midst of your lying, your cheating, your see y'all ain't gonna talk to me, in the midst of whatever it is, men, that so easily beset you, in the midst of a looking at another man's wife, in the midst of lusting after somebody else's woman, in the midst of going after what God told you not to go after, Jesus is still in the midst. Here's the thing, the lepers are in a place, uh, they're in a little camp uh, along the coast uh, from where Jesus was going. He was going to Jerusalem and, and along, along his way, he passes by uh, this area where leprous men were kept. You know, these, these men had not always been leprous, you see. They weren't born leprous. The Bible doesn't tell me that, so I'm not going to assume that. I'm going to assume, well, you know what happens when you assume, but work with me anyway. They've got some of those in the Bible too. I'm going to leave you alone with that. Uh, but but I'm, I'm going to assume these men, they were, they were fathers. Y'all talk to me. They, they were businessmen. They were fishermen. They, they, they were husbands, and, and they were doctors and lawyers. They were tax collectors. They, they were farmers. Come on, talk to me. These were, these were men who had professions. Some of them may have been bums, and some of them may have been uh, 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 no-gooders, but not all of them were like that. Uh, I'm going to tell you how I know later. But anyway, these men hadn't always lived in this camp. Uh, they were sent there because leprosy was a highly contagious disease. Oh, if only salvation, we could make salvation contagious. If only the gospel could be as contagious as leprosy. Oh, wait a minute. Let me, let me get some more. For, if only love could be as contagious as leprosy. If only goodwill could be as contagious as leprosy. If only my thoughts towards you could be as contagious as, oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. If only doing right by the next, see, this is why it's quiet, because see, it's not as contagious even as I'm speaking. Ain't nobody stood to their feet yet and said, yes, God, let love be as contagious as leprosy. Yes, God, let faith be as contagious as leprosy. Yes, God, let long suffering be as contagious as leprosy. Yes, God, let hope be as contagious as le God, let your will be as contagious as the coronavirus. But see, the saint's still sitting down because he just told you, he put breath in you, that whatever you said, it would come to pass. And you're still sitting there. And you wonder why your house is messed up. Because you won't even operate in what he gave you in his own house. Open your mouth and say, God, let love be contagious. Ten men have leprosy, and they're in this place, you see. It's a, it's a place that they send folk who are contagious. If only the church were full of contagious people. I know it's a hospital, and, and we have some contagions in here, but it seems we, 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 carry, we, we pass on more diseases than we do eases. We pass on more backbiting than we do forgiveness. Come on, I just want the church to pray with me. If you ain't in the church, don't worry about it. If, if we could just come to the hospital of the house of God, where we do have some areas for contagion, but if we could just inject love into those who come with contagion instead of touching them prematurely. See, if you touch them and you ain't covered yourself, You will begin to pick up what they have. And then you will go out into the rest of the community as a contagion yourself. Now we have what's called an epidemic. 
And we want Dr. Jesus to fix it when Dr. Jesus said, I just put lungs, about breath in your lungs. Speak your own cure. Speak over yourself and say, I am. I am healed. I am delivered. I am set free. I am forgiven. I am restored. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I am restored. See, if some of us could let go of the past and just say, God, I forgive myself. Say, God, I just want to thank you for releasing me. God, if don't nobody else remember what you've done, I remember. The ten men, the ten men, they've been sent to a camp, you see, for, for diseased people. And they have... They've been sent there. They, they were sent away from healthy people. They were sent away from folk who wasn't dealing with what they were dealing with. But it doesn't mean they weren't dealing with something. Isn't it funny how folk want to label you for what you're dealing with? But because theirs isn't as noticeable as your stuff is, they think they're better than... I wish I had some saints that would walk with me today. But you know, if, if, if you're not suffering on the outside, like they're doing, if, they, if you don't have symptoms that appear on the outside, they want to tell you and diagnose your symptoms when they need to be in the same hospital you going to, only in a different ward. Uh, but uh, so, so they're, they're the lepers in this leprous camp area and and uh, uh, their insurance didn't cover what they were suffering with. See, they didn't have Aetna, U.S. health care. But, but, and even the cross was blue. <laughs> and so was the shield. The cross hadn't turned red yet. So they didn't know about the redemption of the cross. But they had heard about the one who would be on the cross. You and I have the redemption of the cross. But they were working with the one who was going to be on the cross. If only we could start acting like we were in the presence of the one who was on the cross rather than just the cross. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a, no, 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 no. There's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for you. We, we get so hung up on the cross that we forgot who hung on the cross. He was in a leprous camp and insurance didn't cover it, so they sent him, sent all these over here. And Jesus is on his way by text says now that means it's working for me can I give five people a hint when you read the word now in the text whenever you read now it means now Okay, I, I can tell I got some visitors. Let me help you. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when he says a thing, even though it was, it was written yesterday, it's the same today. And it'll work tomorrow if you live to see tomorrow. It's the same. It does. So that now, yesterday, is the same now, today. Now faith is the substance of things. So he's walking along now. He's on his way. I like the way they write this, that, that, that Luke writes this, because he said he's on his way. Luke is, Luke, he's, he's a, Luke's a doctor. He's a, he's, a, he's a master physician with that scalpel in the rear. You know, he cut out some stuff. Yeah, he's a, when he says he's on his way, that means that Jesus is traveling in your situation. That means he's putting one foot in front of the other, moving in your situation. Y'all not talking to me. Y'all have to learn how to read. It there ain't no need to worry, because the night is gone away. It'll be all over. Jesus is working it. 
every time he shows up, he has to move. Lord, is that you on the water? Bid me. He's always moving. I wish I could get five people that would shout with me. Even though you worried about it, Jesus is moving on your behalf. Even though you don't know how it's going to work out, he's moving on your behalf. And even though you can't see the end, he's moving on your Tell five people, he's moving on my behalf. 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 He's moving. Tell five people, you need some grace in that thing. Move. Tell them he's moving on my behalf. He's moving on my behalf. While I'm yet waiting on the report, he's moving on my behalf. While I'm yet waiting on the answer, he's moving on my behalf. While I'm waiting, while, while I'm yet waiting on it, he's moving. Ten lepers. Text says he's on his way. And as he was going into a village, not the village where they were, but a village, the ten men who had leprosy uh, met him. Now, this meet him means that, uh, come here, sweetie. I want you to, I want you to. You, you, you go down to the end of the stage down there. Now, I'm going to be one of the ten. I'm going to be all ten. I'm going to be all ten because I'm all that. Yeah. Now, you're going to be Jesus. Now, I'm over here now. Leprosy is a disease of the skin. Now, Jesus was, I'm going to give him a real good. You go down this aisle. Go up there to where the chick with the red hair is. And that chick right there. Sister girl with the red hair. Now you start there. Now you're going to be Jesus. Now you're walking along Gal alongside Galilee. Now you're walking down there. You're going to come down to the village. Now this is where the village is. Now we the lepers. Now while you were yet walking, word was getting out that Jesus was somewhere around. <laughs> See, this, this is what bothers me with folk who say they believe. Because if Jesus is working for you, that means he's in my vicinity. This is why I have some issues with folks that come to have to, to, be, to be church. And I keep telling y'all this is the house of God. Because if you really come to worship, then I ought to start leaping when you get blessed. Because that means if I can see you, he can see me. That means if you got healing, that means healing is in the vicinity. That means if you got a raise, I'm getting ready to get a raise. That means if you got a new job, I'm getting ready to get one. If you got a new car, I'm getting something new. You got blessed with the house, I'm getting some. God is in the vicinity, and the word is getting out because you can't let him bless you, and you don't tell nobody. Tell somebody, I got to tell them of his goodness. I got to tell you how good he's been to me. Go ahead, turn around and say, I got to tell you how good he's been to me. He healed me when I was sick and nobody knew I was sick. He came and paid the bill when nobody even knew I was behind. He kept me from getting evicted when I was about to be out in the street. Put a roof over my head. Y'all don't, ain't nobody going to talk to me. You don't know how he paid the mortgage when nobody else knew the mortgage was due. You don't know how he kept me when my job let me go. You don't know what the Lord, let me tell you. How good he's been to me. So he's in the vicinity. Now word then got out while he was walking down. So he gets to the village. Now they are looking because the text says they met him. When the text says they met him, it means they locked eyes with him. Ain't no need to worry. Listen, I'm going to mess with five folk in here. Reverend, I'm going to mess with them. Now, you, you, I might need security, okay? All right. Listen, this is how you're going to know he met him. 
I need some, where are my overweight lovers in the house? Any overweight lovers in the house? Where are my overweight lovers in the house? Because when you locked eyes on the person you in love with, you knew from across the room you were in. I need some folk who ever been in love to give God a praise. And the shout and said, when I saw that sister across the room, listen, I lost my mind. Who is that? When I saw that brother walk in, is he married? That's all I want to know. Is, is he married? Is he married? See, you only think that's for you. But when the lepers saw Jesus, the text says they met him, but what they met was love. Love will make you gather with some folk you don't want to be around. Love will make you come together in the midst of your misery. Love will make you come and say, hey, I don't care how much you don't like me. Jesus is here. We got an opportunity to get healed. Everybody come out. Y'all so excitable. So the ten are here. And Jesus starts walking towards them. And as Jesus is walking towards them, they yell out. Because now they know it's really him. It's not a rumor anymore. They can see for themselves. How do you react with what you thought was a rumor God makes come to pass? Is that how you react when he said, I put breath in your lungs and whatever you got to say? That's how you react when he said, I come through with a fresh wind and I'm going to give you a fresh anointing. I'm going to pour out you a fresh blessing. I'm going to pour out on you in the last days, my spirit. You won't have room enough to receive what I got for you. I'm going to cause you to operate in overflow. Is that how you react when you see him? Because he's going to make it manifest before your very eyes, boo-boo. For the folk who need a point somewhere in this, the lepers were over here. And the lepers started out with a setback. I want to just talk to about five people, because I know it's only five of y'all that's ever had a setback. Being in the leper colony was not where they had intended on being. They, they were working their carpentry. They, they were working their jobs and taking care of their families. And sickness came. And when sickness came, something they had no control over. I feel my help. Something you had no control over. Somebody, somewhere, something just comes upon you and it sets you back. I need to tell you, your setback was from God. I, I know y'all don't want to really hear all of that, but stop cussing about your setbacks. Stop fussing about your setbacks. God has to do a setback. Because when Jesus comes down the vicinity and people start talking, he said, now it's time for the setup. <laughs> but you can't have a setup without a setback. I need five people. 
people who just going to worship with me. I'm just not going to start cussing about the setback anymore because I know I belong to God. I know I'm in the palm of his hand. I know he's my redeemer. I know he keeps me. I know he loves me. I know he knows my name. I know he knows I love him. He said that I love him. He knows that I love him. And because of that, he's got to set me up. This setup has got to work. This setback has got to work for my setup. Tell somebody behind you, the setback had to work for my setup. So the lepers, the lepers start out with the setback. I feel my help. Can I really tell you like I mean it? The Lord also has to send your setback. Hey, boo-boo, how you doing? God has to send your setback. Hey, man of God, how you doing? Glory. God has to send a setback. He'll send it. Not the devil. The devil can't do nothing to you that God don't allow. The devil has to get God's permission to mess with you, but he can't touch you. I almost titled this, Can't Touch This. I almost did, but I needed, I needed, I needed y'all to get the message. So this is what it is. He said, but I have to allow the setback, not just for the setup, but I got to let you know who to let go. Because see, everybody like you when you paid. Everybody like it when you helping them. Yes. Everybody like it yes. when you healthy well. and you can serve them. Yes. But don't let you fall. Don't, don't let you have a setback. Well, you know, I, I would have, but you know. You know, I, 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 I tried, but you know. But when your mortgage was due, you were taking up a collection to pay their mortgage. But now that yours due, ain't nobody got $5 to help you. Now that you sick, ain't nobody got a dollar to help you. You understand? You, you, you. God said, I got to allow the setback. Because in order to set you up properly, I got to get you to let go of some stuff. Or else you will bring some of the same mess that helped you get diseased in the first place. So, he lets you get diseased. Disease, 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 disease. Disease, dis-ease, disease. He let you get disease so he could separate you from the rest. There comes a now time when you have to be separated from everybody else. I'm just going there. Security. It's funny how people will try to flip the script. I'm going there. You ready, boo-boo? It's funny how folk will try to flip the script on you when you, God is separating you from them, but they'll try to make it look like God is separating them from you. Let me help you know how you will know whom God is separating from whom. God will make it look like you ain't got jack to work with. He will make it look like your saboteurs have won. Preach to yourself, Tina. He will make it look like the scheme of the enemy was working on you. Just so he can let the rest of them go. Baby, you holding on too much. Let me look like you diseased. Let me make it look like you the one with the problem.
And as my good friend Jonathan Pat, Dr. Pat said the other day, you'll find out you were right all along. Help me, Holy Ghost. I feel extra wind in my lungs. Normally, I'm winded by now, but I feel wind in my lungs, Apostle. Lord, have mercy. Jesus is in the village. They lock eyes on him, and the text says they met him. And when they met him, they said, hold up. Don't come any closer, because we don't want you to get what we got. See, if you really know how much of a blessing and how much of a mess you can be, you don't want to bring anybody else into your mess until you can bless. But messy folks say, come go with me anyway. I'm messy, you come be messy with me. Just make me look good in the mess. Back to the, to the bridge, back to the top. Take it back to the top. Take it back to the top. I, I, hear, I hear music in the air. They said, hold up. Uh, they stood at a distance, and they yelled out, uh, Jesus, Master, Savior. Well, he didn't know. They didn't know him as Savior yet, so I'm, I'm ad-libbing. That's my ad-lib. Okay. They said, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Wait a minute. This pity doesn't mean feel sorry for me. It means take a look at my current condition. Assess my current, I wish I had some real worshipers in the house right now. It's all right to have a disease. But in order to be healed, you got to have the whole situation assessed. That's why we got three people clapping. Because it's a whole bunch of mess in the house of God. And y'all don't understand, and I'm not just talking about this room. I'm talking about everybody that comes in the house of God. He sends you here because it's a hospital. He sends you here because it's a place of healing and deliverance. But we want to sit in the chairs and look all cute and act like we ain't got nothing to be delivered from. Baby, I'm still being delivered for some stuff. I'm still being healed. And I preach the gospel. Because I don't know who touched me. <laughs> Some of us are walking around with stuff because we don't let too many people touch us. Oh, we were touched inappropriately. We were touched at the wrong time, touched in the wrong place, walked around. Some folk got touched. We done touched somebody in the wrong time, in the wrong place. But whatever the case is, we're a mess. Yeah. It's not to say you've never been a blessing. But at the current state, you're a mess. Yeah. Tell somebody, I've been a mess once or twice in my life. Come on, be honest with them now. Tell them, I've been a mess once or twice in my life. And I'm probably one right now. Yeah. Tell them, I'm probably one right. Come on, you can talk. Yeah. Tell them, I'm probably one right now. <laughs> they said, take, have pity on us. Assess my whole situation. Because... There's something we've already heard about you. If you know my current situation and I'm completely honest and truthful about it, Apostle, that's called a Selah moment. When I'm completely honest and truthful, see this text. I'm not going to go and tell half the story. I'm not going to go and make myself look good. I ain't going to go and just get my version of it. But I'm going to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. God, help me tell the truth even when I don't look favorable. So that way this light that shows me unfavorable can never shine on me again. 
They missed it, Rev. This light that is currently unfavorable on me, if I just walk in truth, if I just walk in integrity, if I just walk in honesty, this lying light can't shine on me no more. But as long as I live this lie, this is the lie that will be on me. We heard about you. Come on, assess our total situation because you can heal us. Heal us. Heal us. Heal us. Heal us. So, so Jesus looks at him. This, this is the funny part. Y'all can laugh at this. You know, the Bible got jokes. Y'all ain't know Jesus had a sense of humor. He said, he said um, uh, when he saw them, he didn't say, be healed. He sent them to the place where they were told not to go. He said, go show yourself to the priest. When he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. But the priest were the one that sent them to the... The priests were the ones that sent them to the leper's colony. Priest said, we can't do nothing for you here. You got to go where everybody got what you got. You got to go over here and get this thing. You know, stay there until you die. We'll send food. We'll send some clothing. We'll make sure you look nice while you're deceased. But we're not trying to heal you. Jesus doesn't even go over and touch him. He said, oh, okay. Go show yourself to the priest. And kept on going. You don't see no, read the text. This is nowhere where Jesus stops. Well, he does later, but he's, he's constantly walking. Because when you have an assignment, nothing gets in your way. That's a lesson for those who are called to ministry. When you have an assignment, nothing gets in your way. Because he has a certain place to be at a certain time because he's operating in now. So so he said, all right, go show yourself to the priest. Now, if they do this, the problem, the the issue is, uh, a part of why they have to do this is because, remember, Jesus came not to do away with the law, but to fulfill it. And a part of the law was, in order to be declared clean, it had to be declared by a priest. So they couldn't just leave the, the, the leprous colony after having been cleansed and just say, I'm clean. No one would still touch them because the priest had not declared it. See, when you get delivered, you have to get delivered by Jesus, and, and then he will send his emissaries to tell and witness on how much uh, or how you've been cleansed. See, the problem is we want to jump from place to place to let other people do stuff. God said, I have an assigned place for you, and I have an assigned place for you, and I have an assigned place for you, and I have an assigned place for you. And when you do, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And when, I, and when I cleanse you, they will speak about how you were cleansed. You ain't got to tell nobody. So let me, let me help the five people who might have missed it. You don't have to worry about going around telling anybody, oh, I got delivered from that demon. You don't have to worry about telling nobody that. The people that delivered you and were witnesses will talk about how God delivered you. I, I, I got delivered from uh, smoking and drinking. Well, the people around you will begin to be able to tell other folks how you got delivered. Why? Because God says we overcome by the word, by the power of the Lamb and the word of our He wants you to testify about the deliverance, but he's going to send some other people because in the mouth, wait a minute, that breath you got? I was trying to get to the breath. I was just wanting to see if y'all were still with me. So he's got you. He's got a setback and he's got a setup. But watch this. So the text says that as they went, as they went, they were cleansed. He didn't tell them you're healed. Now he said, as they went. The second thing you've got to know about your setup is you must be obedient in the setup. It does not work if you're not obedient. Tell five people, I got to obey what God is saying. It didn't look like they were healed. 
They were expecting Jesus himself to do it. But the healing was in as they obeyed. Your healing is as you do the thing. Y'all ain't been with me. Your deliverance is in as you do it. You can change it as you speak it. You can change it as you walk it. You can change it as you talk it. But you know, I went to that church and she didn't lay hands on me or he didn't lay hands on me and deliver me like the other people. No, because you got to walk yours out. No, you got to speak over yourself because your mouth has gotten you into too much stuff. So God's got to use that same tongue you got yourself into that to get yourself out of it. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to wait for you to come back. So the last thing, this is, this is the best part. So tell somebody I went from a setback to a setup. But then one of them, one of them, when he saw he walking, when he saw he was healed, evidently, Apostle, a fresh wind must have come through and put some new wind in his lungs. I know it ain't, that ain't happened to nobody in here. But some new wind must have got in his lungs because, see, leprous people, uh, um, they, 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 they were kind of short-winded sometimes. Uh, even though it was a skin disease, they, they weren't too active, you see. Um, and so his wind wasn't what it used to be. So it's a lot of meat in that text right there because the text says he came back. Well, they had already started going. And so where my Jesus at? Come on, Jesus. Now, Jesus, now you, you were at the village. Now you got to start going. I'm a, uh, you're not going back, but I'm a, just walk slowly that way. Now Jesus going, he's going on to Galilee or Jerusalem. And he sent the, the ten lepers to go to the priest. You see where Jesus going? You see where the, where the lepers are going? They're going in opposite direction. And as the leper was walking, he said, wait a minute. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Lepers, if you read about them, they have to be totally covered because nobody could touch them. So something had to happen to him to make him pull back the cloth and see. Maybe the, 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 the white bumps on his hand left or some of the sores on his face, but he can't see his own face. I, I just believe he unwrapped himself and saw his innermost parts and said, wait a minute, my manhood back. I wish I had some men talking to me. He said, hold up, I'm really back to being a whole man again. And as he's walking, he starts to cover himself back up, and now he has to go, Jesus, wait! Jesus then walked halfway to Jerusalem, and he's catching him. This is somebody that ain't ran. Y'all ain't talking to me. This ain't somebody that's been running like this every day. He's brand new in his legs, in his arms, in his lungs, and everything in him takes off running after Jesus, Master, who says, wait a minute, I can't go another further with new breath in my lungs and not come back and give you glory for what you've done to me. Even if I got to chase you down, Jesus, I know you on your way somewhere else. I know somebody else sick, but with the new breath I got, Jesus, wait a minute. Glory, God, glory, God. The Bible says that he goes to him, praising him with a loud voice. Where your voice at, church? He says, Jesus looks at him and he says, Wait a minute, uh, weren't there 10 of y'all? 
and he was looking around because now he's checking his own eyesight. Didn't I bless everybody in the church? Why is it that only four of y'all standing? Why is it that only two of you are giving me glory? Why is it that it's only one that's really praising me? Why is it that none have given me an offering? What is it? He said, where's the rest of them that I blessed? Can I tell you, there was one, somebody said one. My last point to you, it just takes one to make the difference. Hold up. I don't want you to clap. I want you to understand. I need you to put your hands on yourself and say, I'm that one that makes the difference. You can make the difference to make it go bad, or you can make the difference to make it go good. It's all in what you decide to use your breath. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to show you how I got to, you went from lef, leaper to leper. It only takes one day in a year to make it a leap year. And that day was yesterday. You better tell three people I'm in a leap year and this is my year to leap, boo-boo. Yesterday was the beginning of my leap time. I, I just went from leaper to leaper. February 29th was my, oh, y'all night talk. I just went from leper to leaper. It only takes one. It just takes one. I'm the one that's going to come back and give God glory. I'm the one that's going to make the difference in my ministry. I'm the one that's going to make the difference in my family. I'm the one that's going to bring it back to glory with God. I'm that one that will give him glory. I'm that one that will give strength. I'm that one that will praise him like a mad woman. I'm that one that will worship him with all the days of my life. I'm that one that will praise him with all my breath. It only takes one. Come on and give him one praise. Just takes one. Come on, where you one praise? Where you one worship? He said, I'm with. He said, where's the other nine? Only one came back. He said, then go. With you, you've been pray, you've been, you've been blessed. What does he say? He said, I bless you. You, 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 uh, your, your blessings, honey, they won't look like the other nine because you gave me a different praise. You gave me a different worship. You gave me something unique. He said, were none of the others blessed? I don't know. He said, I can't speak for them, but all I can do is speak for myself. He said, go, and you are made well. I need to tell the one person that's ready to make a difference. Whether you're making a difference in your family, you might be the one making the difference in your household. You might be the one making the difference at work. And I know that's hard. You might be the one making the difference in your ministry. The one making the difference in your church. You might be the one that changes the generational curses. But I'm here to tell you what the text says. The text says since you're the one who can back you just went from leper to leaper just because you're the one that came back you just went from trying to crawl in that thing to leaping over it you don't have to worry about how to get through it he's gonna leap you right on over it I wish I had some worshipers and praise us God said wait a minute let me help you and show you exactly what's gonna happen and because you brought it back to me it shall go well with you. Somebody say, well, what is well? Well says it's a deep place. The well is a deep place. And the Spirit of the Lord searches the deep things of God. God said, I'm pouring out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men dream dreams. The Spirit of the Lord searches the deep things of God. The well is the deep place of God. No matter what happens, because you're the one who came back to give 
gave him glory. You're the one who wanted to make the difference. You're the one who answered the call. You're the one who knew something was wrong. You're the one who knew you had to give it to God. You're the one that said, for, for God I'll live and for God I'll die. You're the one that said, come heaven or high, I'm going to live for God and I'm going to do it his way. Because you're the one. You went from leper, from leper to leper because you're the one God says, I shall make it well for you all the days of your life. It does not mean you'll never have a problem, but your problem shall turn out well. It doesn't mean you'll never have a setback, but your setback shall turn out well. It doesn't mean you'll never go through anything else, but I'm here to tell you it shall turn out well for you. Why? Because you're no longer a leper. You are now a leaper. I just need four people to start leaping like you've never leaped before and tell God, I'm leaping for you, God. This is my next level of praise. This is my next level of worship. This is how I'm going in. This is how I'm going to give it to you. However high you want to take me, I'm going higher in you, God. I feel ordination. I feel elevation in the house. I got to leap for joy. And the Bible says that when Elizabeth met Mary, her baby began to leap inside of her. I need two or three people to get together and get some folks together that something leaps inside of you. Find some people that make your insides leap. I got to go to another level. I got to get with some people that will make me leap like never before. I got to get around some folk that will take me higher, that won't bring me back down. I got to get with some folk who won't let me rest on my laurels. I got to get with some folk that's going to argue for me, that's going to subject for me, that's going to speak on my behalf. I got to go a little bit higher. I got to leap. 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 Come on, church. Somebody say yes. Somebody tell the Lord yes. Open your mouth and say yes. It's time to leap, church. 